today we will be looking at creating a database using Microsoft Access. I've already opened the Microsoft Access software, so we're just going to go straight into it. If it is a document that you have already created before, then you can look in your recent list or go by open to actually search for that file. However, this one is brand new, so I'm going to select blank database. Now I'm going to tap it only once because if I tap it twice, it's going to prevent me from giving the file a name. So it's afterwards that I'll have to rename it. So right now, by tapping it once, it allows for me to name the file. So I'm going to call this motor vehicle registration. So it is being stored in document. However, I want it to be stored in a special folder. So I'm going to browse for that folder right here by clicking this icon. So seeing that I click the icon, I'm going to search for the folder that I want to store this file in. So I just search on my computer to the specific location. So let's go. And here it is. So I'm just going to select OK. Now that's going to change the path that the file will have. So we're going to then select Create. All right, good. So now that it has created the database, according to the name that we have given to it, let's just go in now and start creating the tables. But the first table that I have to create, I've already done so in Excel. So I'm going to show you how you can actually import that table from Excel into Access. So I'm going to be using external data. So I tap on that option, then I go to new data source, click on the drop down and select from file, and then I'm going to select Excel. So once I tap on that, it allow for me to go through the same procedure that it did before for me to locate so or to place my file at a particular location. So here we are, file name. I'm going to just browse for it. So let's just click browse. Go back again to search for the Excel with the table that I need. Here it is. Tap on that and then select open. So it has located where exactly my file is and the name of that file. Now there are three options that are available for me to use. I can import this source data, the new table that I have into a new table in my current database, or I can actually append a copy of the records into table one, the generic table that generated for me initially as I created the program or the database. And then you have where I can actually link it to the data source. So if anything changes in Excel in the data source, it will automatically update access. However, if I change it in access, it would not affect the data source. So I'm just going to select the first option, let it stay, and then click OK. It should allow for me to actually select the table. So here we are. It's not on the sheet instruction, it's actually on sheet two. So when you are doing it, you may see a list of sheets depending on the number of sheets that you have in your Excel. So I'm going to go to sheet two. What I did was to ensure that this data was placed in the first row. So I started it from first row, from A1, so that when I bring it here, I will have from the top, all the way down with data so there's no empty rows so i'm going to go ahead and select next and back to what i was saying with putting it in a1 i put the heading in a1 in the row one so that when i come here my first row contain the column heading all right so i'm going to let this continue the tick if i want to remove it i can and then it will not have any headings, but these were specifically designed to be the headings. So I'm just going to retick that and then select next. All right, so the table has its various columns or fields. 
so i can actually click on them and make adjustments to them and their data type here but i'm just going to leave it as is when i actually go into the design view i'll make adjustments so i'm just going to select next now access wants to add a primary key your primary key is actually what is used to uniquely a record or an item a field within the table that can uniquely identify each row just like your passport number is unique to you your tax registration number your social security number your nis that's your national insurance scheme number is unique to you no two person have the same number the same thing when it comes on to the records in the table you need to have something that can once there's no duplication of information you're going to need a primary key a unique identifier for each record so let's access add one no because this one is auth the auto number and i don't want it one by one one two three four i want it actually to use the registration number so i'm going to select choose my own so it has already automatically selected the first column now if it was not the first column i could have gone through and reselect so i'm just going to select next and i'm going to give this table a name so that would be my vehicles and i'm going to select finish now once i'm finished it's going to ask me if i want to save the steps in case i want to repeat this i don't have to go through the entire wizard i'm just going to select save imported step save it as import motor vehicles and then i am going to save import now when i get back to my database you would recognize that i have two tables table one and vehicles vehicles would have the information if i double tap on it it will go to it the information that i just imported but table one has nothing in it so what i'm going to do is close table one and i'm going to go on to vehicle now that table one automatically was removed because i didn't add anything to it and i created this new table all right so i'm going to now move on to adjusting this table so that it is according to my specification so i'm going to go to home there's the view now if i click on the drop down you have data sheet view and design view now this that you're seeing right now is a data sheet view so i'm going to select design view and that's where i'm going to go in and change the field size the descriptions as well as if i have to change the data type so right now as you can see there's a small key on vehicle registration number because we made it the primary key and it will not duplicate so i'm just going to go in quickly and add some description now that's optional but to make sure that your table looks functional and well put together description is good all right so i've added all of my descriptions However, I'm going to go through and make sure that the data type is correct and make sure that the field size are adjusted. So the first one that I have is the vehicle registration number. Now, I'm going to go back to the table. So let me just close and save. When I double tap on the table, I will look on the vehicle registration to see the maximum amount of characters in the field. And the maximum is actually one two three four five so my field size should be five um if i put four then it would automatically remove the extra digits that are there for these i lose that information for the make the maximum would be two four six eight ten twelve thirteen this is medium date as well as four digits for your taxpayers id so let's go back to the design view all right so this is fine with short text i'm going to change the size to five i'm going to put the greater than sign here so that i capitalize the letters for the make i'm going to change the make to 15 letters and i'm going to leave that as so 
and then I'm going to go to the expiration. It has a one digit for the date, three digit for the month, and then two digit for the year. So I'm gonna change that to medium date. All right, so just let me just drop down the box once more. You have general with the date and the time, long date with the actual day, and you have medium, short, long time, medium time, and short time. So we just want the date, so we're gonna to stick to medium. Not gonna change any other options here. For taxpayer's ID, I'm going to make an adjustment to it because it's not going to be used for calculations, right? It's just text. So I'm just, even though it's numbers per se, we're not using them for calculations. So I'm just going to change that to short text. So you have, just to point out, you have long text and long texts are used for anything greater than any sentence greater than the 255 characters, numbers, maybe use for your calculation, your data, your time, your currency. So I'm not spending much time on the others because older version of Access does not have some of these things, any distinction between them. For example, date, time extended. You have currency for money, you have auto number when you want Access to actually give you one, two, three, four, five, generate the number for you. Yes, no, if you have the option between yes and no. You have the OL object, which we will not be using, so I'm not spending much time on that. You have hyperlink if you want to actually put an email and hyperlink it. Your attachment, you want to put a file, and you have calculated. Now, calculated is used when you actually want to, let's say you want to add field one to field two, or you have sales one plus sales two plus sales three to get your total sales, you can use this, but remember it must have the square bracket. So it's not calculated, so I'm just gonna cancel that. It will indicate that it's not appropriate for calculated anyhow. So let's change that and put text, short text, and I'm going to change that to four. All right, so let's close this and save. So it will mention that I'll lose some information because of the different field size that I changed, but I did not violate any by creating any size that's less than it should, so it should be fine. So I'm just gonna continue and select yes. All right, so at this point, I've added the field size and the descriptions. So there's a particular field that I want to add, the vehicle type that was not in the imported table. So I'm just going to click on the table, double click and select the design view option. And then I'm going to click on the row that I want it to appear above. So I'm going to click on make and insert. So just to show again, if I want it between make and registration, I'll have to click on registration insert the row. Now I don't want it so I'm going to just right click on it and delete. So let's just add the vehicle type. So vehicle type. I'm going to have short text and I'm going to write my description. So it consists of the type of vehicle. So that is either a truck, a car or a bike. Now the Field size is going to be five because truck is the longest word. Now, because it duplicates, it makes no sense retyping these options. So I'm going to go to lookup and I'm going to change it from text box to list box. Then I'm going to change the row source type. I'm going to change it to value list. And then I'm going to add the values that I want in that list. So in quotation, I'm going to write car comma, bike, or let me put bike first, put it in alphabetical order, so bike, quotation, open quotation, car, close quotation, comma, open quotation, truck, close quotation. So I want these options to be made available so that I don't have to be typing over bike, car, truck. All right, so once that is done, I'm going to select close and I'm going to save. So let's reopen that table by double tapping. So you realize that it placed the vehicle type where I wanted it to be. So let's just go through. As you can see, it creates a list of the options. So car, car, 
I'm going to go through and add all of them. Awesome. So all the vehicle types were added and I now have my vehicle table. So let's just go through and create the next table. So let's close this option. You don't have to press save because Microsoft Access automatically saves your information with the exception of Excel and Word where you have to save within a few minutes. Access, it's automatically saved as you work through it. So let's, let's just select create and then table design. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to add my fees. Sorry. So that would be vehicle type. And then I'm going to add registration fee. All right. So just going back to the vehicle type, vehicle type will have five characters truck being the longest word as you have observed before and I want this particular field to be my primary key seeing that there will be no duplication of the vehicle types so consist of the type of vehicle so I'm going to change this and make it my primary key then the registration fee will not be text because as you can see, it's money. So I'm going to change that to currency and I'm going to add consist All right. And as you can see, the decimal place is actually auto. You can change it to two if you wish. And then we are going to just click the X it will ask us to name the table so we're gonna select save so we're gonna call that fields and that's okay let's open that table to add the details so that's bike the cost of a bike is $100 so let's go tap car the cost for that is 250 tab truck and the cost for that is 500 so as you can see we basically create the fields first the names of the columns and we place the restriction there or we place this the structure of it so that when we're adding detail to it it meets certain criteria so we're finished with the field table let's close that and let's create the owner table so let's go back to create table design and let us go in so the first thing is taxpayer id now this is going to be short text just as it was before consists of the taxpayer's id now before in the vehicle table i'd use four fields sorry four characters so i'm going to stick with that as well as i'm going to make taxpayers id a primary key seeing that i will not have any duplication in the table the vehicle table there were duplications for the taxpayers id now taxpayer being in another table and it's a primary key here in that table it's considered to be a foreign key the reason why we have them in both tables is to create that relationship, that link between the tables. As you know, database is a group of related tables. All right, so let's go first name. Now that's going to be text consists of the first name of taxpayers. And we're going to make this, let's make it 30 characters. Don't want to make it too small. And then someone has a long name and it cannot hold. Last name, short text. I can just click on this and copy, Control C, then Control V, and just make a short change with 
the last name. Then the next thing, sorry, didn't add change that. So that's 30. The next thing is government. Government employee. Now this is whether or not they are. So that's a decision. So that's going to be changed to yes or no. And then I'm going to write my description. So consists of whether the taxpayer is a government employee or not. All right. So let's move to the next field. So it's already yes or no. So there's no need to ch change or add any field size. The next column would be gender. So this is short text and it's going to be one character. As you can see, we have the letters. Now, this is just for demonstration purposes for you to understand the validation rule and validation text. Now, the only thing for the rule is what exactly can be typed in the field. So I'm going to be putting F or M and in the text to tell someone if they write anything else that it can only accept a certain data. So can only enter F or M. All right, so this is just to show you that you can set your own validation rules for a particular field. If it's like only a few items that the person can enter, you can set the rules so that they can actually only enter those. And if anything else is entered, then it will actually give you another message. Just even email, if they enter without the Gmail on it or Yahoo, then it will indicate that there's an error. So let's just continue consists of the gender of the taxpayer. All right, and the last set will be streets where they live. That will be short text, so consists of the street name. Let's change that to say 50. Let's go back to the gender. There was something I missed out. We want to use the capital letter. So it's only plays capital letter. So we use a greater than symbol. Let's move to parishes. Short text as well. Consists of the parish. That the taxpayer lives good so that's going to be let's put that to 50 it could stick to this exact amount there but you can add other parishes so let's just make sure that we have space for those and the last thing that we're going to add is the telephone number now telephone number even though it says the word number it will not be used in any calculation so i will not be using the data type number as well as if you recognize normally it carries brackets and hyphens those are not numbers and so we're going to use short text for that so consists of the phone number for the tax bill all right so my data type has been set so the field size is what I'm going to adjust so that is open bracket 876 close brackets what well, um, one two three dash one two three four five dash so because of that I am going to give it its 12 characters so I write the 12 but I'm going to add what is known as an input mask so 876 is for all the numbers so I'm going to include that so that as we type 876 will automatically appear without us retyping that information then i'm going to put 999-9999 which would be the placeholders so 876 is used for every number and the dash but the 999 would be just placeholders so i can put other numbers there so we have entered everything adjusted the field size ensure 
that the data is the data type is correct and the description as well as we have used the validation rule and the validation text as well as input mass now you can add captions just to label it so that as when you're viewing it you can see the label but we're not going to be adding that today so let's just go ahead and close and save and this is owner let's make that capital all right so let us just open the owners table and add some of the information to it so let me just carry this over so the first taxpayers id is 1101 let's try to put a five you realize that it makes that sound to indicate that no more can be added so let's that put john black so i'm going to be using the tab or the arrow button to move across this is a government official now i'm going to try to put the number three and try to move to the next part now it indicates that i can only have f or m because of the validation text and rule that was entered all right so that is 23 cherry street the saint catherine duplicates and so because it duplicates i can use a drop list or that list box that i used before but for no i didn't so i'm just going to put the information in because it's just a few of them now once i tap on the cell for the telephone number you recognize that the input mask information came up just the brackets and the 876 where the nines were those were just placed older so let me just add that information five two two all right let's try and add another person that's 8808 and we're going to go to eve gray and not a government employee so i'm going to leave that blank so that checkbox if tick is yes and if left blank is no well, let's change that now should have been m F forty five white waters S T and then we add the number. No, it doesn't come up, so I just have to tap into it. Nine four one five two five five. All right, so I am going to try to add some information from the other table so let's just highlight this row i'm going to highlight this row i'm going to control and c to copy and then i am just going to use the plus this plus look for it and i like the entire row once i've highlighted the entire row i'm just going to control and v and it places the extra person so let's just highlight everything for the other the other rules so that you don't have to be typing these things over or everything out one by one so you can actually just highlight it so let's just highlight this control C and let me just use that same plus over across and then i'm going to control and v and it will ask me or inform me that you are about to paste two records and i'm going to say yes if i said no it's actually going to delete it so yes and that's how i add the data now if you recognize i did not type everything because it can be time consuming to do that i could have placed it in excel and imported the table from that file but i've just copied the information and ensure that i highlighted the row that i want it in if only one cell is highlighted then it will only add that one cell's information um, but I want the entire row, so I like the entire row. And when you are doing it, you may right click on it 
and select paste but to make it easier just press ctrl v for me not to have any issue as well as you can delete records but when you're deleting the records and you select delete records it will do one so you can actually highlight everything highlight everything and just press the delete button on your keyboard and everything will be deleted so i'm going to close this now and move forward so the next thing that we're going to actually do is to create relationships so you have seen how we created our tables import tables add data um, field size add data type add descriptions now we're actually going to create relationship between the tables now it's very important to create the relationship because database allows for you to query the information and without a linkage between all tables then we have an issue with getting accurate results so we're going to go to database tool so once you tap on database tool you will see relationships i'm going to tap on that so it's i can add queries or both but for this purpose we're only using tables so we're going to be selecting you can select them one by one to add them or you can click on the first one hold down your control button or your shift button select the other one and then you add the other three now let's say for example you made a mistake and tap the owner's vehicle and vehicle twice the ad if you press that you will have duplication so these with underscore one would be the duplicated files no or tables so what, what you, can you can do is click on it and press delete click on it press delete but once it is there and it's highlighted with the yellow you can press delete all right if it's a case that you accidentally delete like what i just did the fields table you can go back to add table in the menu bar and once you click on it you will see the information and we can add the field once more so there it is so i'm going to be adding the information so let's put fees here owner here so you can move it around all right so each owner will own vehicle so i need to find what in the owner table can match with the vehicle table and if i look through the only field that is common between the two would be taxpayers id now i'm going to drag from the primary key to the foreign key which is in vehicles and i'm when i drag i'm going to release it once i release it this option will come up this window will come up to edit the relationship ensuring that both of them have the same information then i'm going to enforce integrity so when i enforce referential integrity it means that whatever data is in table owner must be the same in table for vehicle so let's say i write a registration number taxpayer id incorrectly so it should be 1101 and i put i101 then when i select enforce referential integrity it will indicate that there is something that does not match and i'd have to go back through to the table and check to see what would have caused it not to link without any issue all right so once i tap on that i can know that the relationship is a one to many so one owner has many vehicles all right so i'm going to select create and you will see the one and the many symbol now i'm going to link fees to vehicle type primary to the foreign key I'm going to enforce referential integrity so you should not have any other type of vehicle or have any vehicle that is not in the fees table it's a one to many and that means that the vehicle type there are many of it that is actually in the vehicles table all right so create and that would be the how you create your relationship so i can ask of my database for a owner of a vehicle and i can know how much that owner has to pay for registration fee because of the relationships that have been created with the tables so i'm going to close and save my relationship good
So once that relationship is created, I can then manipulate the database because of that ability to link the tables. So the next thing that I'm going to be working on would be forms. Now, previously I opened these files and I added them as I'd want, but there is another way that you can actually enter the data into the different tables without actually opening the tables themselves. And that would be your form. So we'll be using the form wizard only based on CXC requirement. We'll be selecting the suitable fields and we will also be using what is known as subform. So when I open a form, I should be able to see other information pertaining to the data that is in that form. So I'm going to be looking for form. You have form, form design, blank form, and then you have form wizard. Now this one allows for us to create the form quite simply. When it goes to the design, you just have to know how to create it from scratch. So we're going to be selecting form wizard. So tap on that option. So we now have the owner table that we want to create a form with so I can easily enter the owner's information. So I can select this single arrow to send all of them over by the selected fields or I can actually send all of them from the available to the selected fields by selecting this option or clicking this option. So if they don't want them, I can send them back over one one or send over all of them. So that's just how you can send over the information. So let's send all of them over. I'm going to change from owner table because each owner will have vehicles that they own. So I want to include that information so I can add a person's information and in, add the car that they have. So let's just put vehicle. I'm going to send over registration type make and the registration expiration date i will not be sending over the taxpayer id because i already have that information all right and so i am going to select next when I select next, it's going to ask me how I want to view the table. Now, I want to view the table by the owner, right? Because that's the one with the primary key. So I'm going to actually view it by the owner. So each owner can have multiple vehicles. Now, one thing I must point out to you at this stage is that if it's not a one-to-many relationship, you will not see form with subform. If it's a one to one relationship, mean that one owner to one vehicle, then a subform will not come up. The only reason why you have form with subform is because one owner has more than one vehicle registered to their names. All right, so we're going to have form with subform. We're going to view it by the owner and then select next. We can select how we want it to appear, whether it's tabular or data sheet format. I'm going to stick with the data sheet format and select next. And we're going to have form owner and subform would be the vehicle. So we're just going to go ahead and there's no need to adjust any of the information here. So I'm going to select next. Once I select next, it's going to bring up the form and how the form will actually look. So it will have the information. As you can see, this is what is already there. So let's bring this over a little bit so that you can see it so you have the owner john black and john black actually owns multiple vehicles and something that i did not show you earlier if you should actually open the tables because of the relationship that was created you can actually click on the plus beside and see the vehicles that are bikes those that are trucks and those that are sorry car and those that are trucks and the date of expiration etc so you can go in and expand these all right so let's go back to the form so it has all the information about the individual and the vehicle that he or she owns 
All right, so we can go next to the other person, next to the third person, and we can move on to the fifth, which would be the last one we had added. So I'm going to go to the sixth, and I'm going to add this new table information to it. So let me just bring this over. So the ID is actually 2202, first name, Carrion Reynolds. She is a government worker, and I'm going to add F. Then I'm going to add the street. That's 45 Berry Place. And this is going to be in Clarendon. And I'm going to add the telephone number. As you can see, it I click on the cell, so it puts it where I place the cursor. So I don't want it there because it's not going to put in all of the number. Just to show you. It will not put in because of where I placed it. So let's just fix that. So that's four, two, three, 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 three. Good. And I can add the vehicle that she owns. So this is H100. The type of vehicle is drop down car. The make is actually Toyota. Now let's go to the next column. The expiration date is the 1st of August 14. Now, once you have that, you could add more vehicle. So this allow, this form allows for us to add each owner as well as a vehicle that they have. So I didn't have to go to the individual tables to actually add them because if you check, I would have to go to owner table and then vehicle table to add this information. But I just need a form, add the owner, add the information to the sub form for a vehicle. So let's close that and go to vehicle table and there you will see this person has added and if you recognize it actually puts it in order it's arranged it according to in ascending order so let's just tap on and expand and you will see the vehicle that this person own if i should go to vehicle you will find that vehicle let's see if we can find it so here is the new one that we entered which was h10 car toyota and we didn't include the taxpayer's ID when we were creating the form for vehicle, but the fact that we have, we had the ID for the owner, then we know that that is what creates the relationship between the two. So let's just close that out and move on. So we're at the stage where we can actually ask, query the database, get information from the database. We can use more than one criterion, use select, use calculated query, more than one fields. And so we're going to go through and do some queries. Now, queries, questions you're asking, things you want the database to give you records of. So the first one is to list the name of the owner of the vehicle the registration number 904X. So we just want the name. So let us go and we're gonna, gonna go to create and then we're going to go to query design. We're not using the wizard, we want to be able to create it from scratch. So let's go to query design. We're going to add the table that we need. So we only need the name of the owner of the vehicle registration 904X. So we're going to be needing two tables. So let's just hold down on shift and select those two tables. Or we could have individually added them. Add, close, and you see the relationship. So we need the name of the person who owns. So vehicle registration will have the registration number. So I'm going to tap on that. So I just tap on it, um, quick tap, and it will appear below. So you have the field, 
the table that that field is in, sort if you want it to be sorted alphabetically or descending order, um, in ascending or descending order, sorry. And then you have show if it's a case that I don't want a particular field to appear in the final table that's created, I can unselect. So it will only show a last name and registration. Then criteria is what exactly am I using to find the information? So right now I'm going to put in 904X. So I can put quotation in it or I can just write it as is and I am going to then select run. There it is. So the owner of this vehicle is Bruce White. Let's go back. I want to just add his taxpayer's ID so I can double tap on that. It comes to the end. I can just hover over it and drag it to where I want it, release, and I can run that once more. And there you go. So this is the first square that was done. And it is the, we're going to name it. So yes, we're going to name it 904X or owner of 904X. Save that and there you go. So you have your first query. Let's move to the next query. We want to find vehicle made starting with the letter J or ending with the letter A. So let's go back to create, then query design and we want vehicle make. So let's just select vehicles, add, close. Now you can add as many information as you'd want. It didn't specify. It just asked about the make. So let us just put in the registration, vehicle type, and the make. So in order to have those starting with J, I don't know the other letters. So I'm just going to put J asterisk. The asterisk will allow for the computer to find those starting with J with whatever letters that follow. If I had known the letters that follow, if it's one letter, I could have put a question mark. If it was just two characters and I know the first one and I wanted to find the second, but it has more than one words or sorry, more than one letters after the J. So I use an asterisk. Now it says or those ending with a so i am going to put asterisk because it must end with the a so asterisk a and then i'm going to run so there you go so it has those starting with j as well as those ending with a we said or if it was a case that we wanted those starting with j and those um ending with a so it must have j and must have a must be true all the way then we would have written it in the same row but we separated it see we separated it so it's either j or a so all those starting with j will come up all those starting sorry ending with a will actually come up so let's just close that save Okay, so let's move on to the next list. The total registration fee to be paid by John Black when his current registration expires. So how much money will John Black have to pay? So let's go back to create, query design. Now I need all of the tables. So I'm just gonna click on the first one and then the last and press shift and then add. Let's close this. So I need now information the John Black. I want to find out how much it is that he is going to actually pay. So I can go ahead and write his name. So I can use John and Black for last so that it knows that it's exactly that person. If I run it, it will show all that John Black has, but I need the total. So there are two ways that I can actually do that. I can do the total from here by selecting this option and it actually gives me the total. So I can select total here, select sum, 
and it gives me the sum but that's not what i really wanted all right so i can come off that go back to the design view and i'm going to go in and i'm going to select the summation that is under the show or hide option so i'm going to select that and when i select it it's going to do group by total is going to group by and i'm going to sum the registration fee for john black so let us run that and when we run it we'll recognize the same figure that was shown before when we use this option is the one that comes up but we didn't want to show all of the vehicles and then the total i wanted to see the total that he will have to pay once the items have expired all right so we have done more than one criterion with john black we have used or select so the run we have used or select we have used more than one field and we are going to move on to the next set of queries so let's just close this and save it as john black total registration and we save so we're going to be creating a calculated query now before i highlighted that you can create a calculated data type within a table so let's say you want you have sales one sales two sales three and you want to add them up and find the total without you manually doing it you can do that within the table but if it's a query it's a question is if you want to find out a specific information and you want to do a calculation then you can do a calculated query so i'm going to be finding out what if I add 25% to the registration fee, how much it would be? So I'm going to select fees table, only close. And if I tap on this, it will add everything, but I'm just going to tap on them individually. And I'm going to add the new column here. Now, the thing about adding the column is that I would have to drag this across to be able to see or use my arrow here to actually go across. But database provides the builder so that it's large enough for me to see everything as I type it. So I'm going to call that field new registration fee. My colon, so that's the name of the field. I am going to go bring this up so that I can see the field that I'm going to be using in this calculation. Now once the field, it must be in square brackets. So I'm going to put registration fee and I'm going to ensure that I spell it the right way because if it's any different from this and it ha it's a field that the database doesn't have then it's going to say parameter value and ask for that information so I'm going to add open bracket the square bracket registration fee square bracket multiply by 0 0.2525 so I can't put the percentage symbol because the computer will not recognize it and will tell me that it's an error so I just convert it to the decimal points and then I'm going to select OK now once I've done that I can select if I don't want to see or want to see but I'm going to leave those and then I'm going to run now, when I run it, you recognize that bike would be $125, cars would be $312, and truck would be $625. But it doesn't come off and look the same way as the registration fee that's there. So I'm just going to go back to the design view. And when I go back to design view, I am going to go to my property sheet, and that is on the show and hide. So I'm going to select property sheet. And I am going to change the format for new registration. I'm going to change it to currency and decimal place two. Once I've done that, I ensure that it was on it first. I am going to close and run once more. And it should adjust it to currency and the two decimal place. So this is my calculated query. So this would be called... 25 25% increase. All right, good.
So we have created four queries so far, simple select query as well as calculated query. There are other queries that you can do with um, calculated. Let's say you want person's age and you have their date of birth and the current year, you can do that. Number of days remaining on a promo, you can actually use that. You want to know how many days are between the um, departure and arrival, you can do that. Now we're going to quickly move into or update our delete query. Update query allows for us to make adjustments to what is in the tables. Delete query also makes adjustments, but it deletes certain information within the table. Now we're going to be going to create and query design. Let's add, let's see, we want to update the bike registration fee from to 120 from 100. So we're just going to select fees, add, close. We're going to select and I'm going to put the type because it's bike to ensure that it doesn't just any other thing but actually bike. But the thing about it is that I don't want to do a select query. I want to do an update query. So there are others, make table, append, update, cross tab, etc. and delete, but we're going to be updating. So let's select that. So I'm going to, once I select it, I will see the update too. So bike, we want bike to update to 120, right? So we have bike as a criteria for the vehicle type and we want the fee to update to 120 was 100. So we're going to run that query. Once we run it, you will see that it says you are about to update one record. Once you select yes, you cannot undo that change that you have made unless you go back into here and update it and change it to 100. But once you do the update, it will automatically change what is in the table. So we're going to go with yes. Now, once you select yes, you won't see a new table appear because you are making an adjustment to the original table, not the creating of a new table using select. So let's just close this. Save, update, bike registration, fee, okay. And I'm going to, I close that. As you can see, the symbol is different. It's an update. So let's go to fields to see if that change has made. Yes, it has changed it from 100 to 120. If I should go to the increase, this also has changed because the original table has been adjusted. Now, delete query is similar to the update query. So let's go to query design and let's try to, let's say, delete a record. First, let me get a, let's use back the, let me look for, so for a vehicle. So let's say 104B. So we want to delete that record. So let's go and we're going to, I close it off. So I have to go back to query design and I'm going to have to add table. So let's click add table and I want to adjust vehicles, add, and I'm going to close. Now what I'm going to be doing is to change it from the select to delete. Now once I select that, I'm going to select what I want to delete. So I want to delete the registration where I'm going to have 124B. Once I select run, it will say you are about to delete one row. So an entire record will be deleted from the table. And I specifically use the primary key in order for me to do the delete. And once I select this yes, then that data is gone. Now I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just, I'm just showing you that that can be done. Now let's close that. Let's say no. And I'm going to save it as delete. 104B and I select OK. Now if I should double tap on it, it's going to be asking me, you are about to run a delete query that will modify the table. So you have to be very careful when it comes on to the delete query because as well as the update queries, because let's say I'd said 
um, add 20 to the cost so every time i press delete query it will add 20 and so it will constantly increase the value so you have to be very careful when you're running those so something that i can show to ensure that you don't adjust is let's say if i want to change the delete i would have to right click and press design view so i can go in and make that adjustment and not do it while it's closed because it will delete the information if i say yes all right so let us do two more queries. We're going to be doing um, listing the fees that are greater than $250. So we're using our relational operators. So let's go back to create query design. And we're looking for, let's say, fee and vehicle. So let me just tap on both. Select, close. So I want vehicles. So let me get the vehicle registration or no I don't need this table so let me just remove it and just use this one and I want to get fees greater than 200 so I go to criteria put in my greater than symbol and write 250 and then I run and I should get the only one that is greater than 250 which is the truck so fees greater than 250. Good. One more query. Um, let's see. I want to find all vehicles that are not truck that are owned by government employees. That's a lot to find. So let's go to query design. So I need information on all vehicles that are owned by government owners and they're not truck. So let's click on that all of the table then close so i need first name last name government employee they didn't ask for these i'm just adding those and vehicle type so let's put the registration double tap so we want all of them so let's put in the fees as well so i need those that are government employees so i'm going to put yes and then i'm going to put on the vehicle type i'm going to put not so the two the greater than and the less than symbol is not so i'm going to put not truck and i'm going to run so these are all so the two government workers are actually well it's three john bruce and Reynolds, but it only shows those that have truck um, cars. So let's just go back quickly and look at some vehicles. So we have so we have one one zero that would be John. So John, let's see if John has a truck. No, John just has cars. So we have three government workers. So let's see, 5569, 5569, 5569, 5569, and here it is. 5569 does have a truck, but if I should go on the query, you realize that 5569, their truck does not come up here because I did state that it must not include any truck. All right, so they are government worker, but I don't want to see any truck included so let's save that government work employee not truck all right so let's save that and those would be your queries now you can practice and get more done add more queries that are necessary all right all right, so we're going back to the government employee and the one that doesn't show the truck owners or the information about the trucks. So we're going to go back to the design view. So you have already been exposed to the field, the table. I mentioned sort, but I didn't show you how to use the sort. You have the show if you click on select, then it will not show it in the table. For example, if I run, you realize the ID is no longer there. 
then you have the criteria which we have I've shown you how to add criteria and use or so let us sort currently it's being sorted by taxpayers ID by default so I'm going to change it and sort it by the registration so let's just look at it so it has a 101 first so let us sort it in ascending order and run and you will realize that that has been adjusted all right so you can sort it whether in ascending order or descending order now the last thing that we're going to be doing is the report according to the CXC syllabus so we have done tables populate the tables manipulate the tables create a relationship um do our queries do our form and the last thing would be our report so we're going to go to create now we use table design and query design and form wizard and for the report we will not be using report design we'll be actually using report wizard which is much simpler to use so we're going to go to report wizard and we are going to change it from the query and put the owner so we want the id first name last name now we don't need the other information at this moment that if we needed it we would have added it but we don't need it at the moment we're gonna need vehicle so we need the registration the type the make as well as we are going to need the expiration date don't need taxpayer ID again and we're going to need the registration fee do not include the vehicle type because it's already there so we're then going to select next now we're going to sort the information or view the information by the owner and we want it to be grouped by their id so all of the information on a particular owner will be placed one area so we're going to do id and then we are going to go next so next is to sort and we want to sort it by we're going to sort it by the vehicle registration or better yet let us sort it by the registration expiration date you can do ascending or descending whichever one you choose now summary option will be there once there is number or currency within the as a data type for a column that you have selected we only have one so we're going to change or we're going to select some average max min and we're going to select okay leaving all data so we're going to go next we are going to choose between the layout so you can have step layout you can have block layout and you have can have outline so just look at the preview we have the block and then we have the step so let us try block and landscape and it will adjust to ensure that everything fits on a page i can unselect that if i don't want it to so we're going to go next and we're going to rename this table to moto registration report leave the preview report so that after it's finished i can preview it and then select finish now this is how it looks as you can see there is a lot of space in between the data because of the list that was created for the vehicle type if it was that you typed in the option individually and you didn't use a drop down box then this would not be there so the more list the more item there is within the list is the more space you will have in between the data so let's close the print preview and let us first duplicate the name of it so we're going to right click copy and bring this over into the center and then right click paste and I'm going to change this to 2013 2014. Let's just delete the extra information and then I can move and put here. So I can go through and you can format, you can format your text so I can change it from what it is now. I can change the size, I can change the color. 
whichever whatever I choose I can go ahead and do so let's highlight that first let's change that to blue let's highlight all of this and change that to another color all right so it's not really in the center let's expand this because a part of it is cut off so let's bring it over a little bit more so you're going to have to go in and check to see if everything is straight so i can actually go back and go to view and see how much it is in the center yes it looks much better so let's go back to the design view all right so what i want to do now is actually bring over some of the information so that i have more space so what i can do is click on the first one hold down the shift button and click on the second so i'm going to just drag these across a little bit so all four of them will come across the first name doesn't have to be so long I can bring this in the center by itself first name doesn't have to be so long bring it over a little bit last name doesn't have to be so long because some of the names are very short so I'm going to bring over the other information so that I have space so this would be the registration date so let's bring this over oh I should have selected both so that I don't have to do this twice. So let's expand it so it can be shown. Vico registration number. Let's bring that over a little bit. Uh, bring this over. All right, so let's go over to vehicle type. Bring this over. And then we have the make. So we have registration fee, but I'm not seeing the registration fee for normally, even if it's a small part, it will be showing it for some strange reason it's not. So let's just bring over this, take over this part. So I can bring over this and bring over this I think I'm seeing the registration let me I'm assuming that it is it right here see it's very small so you're not seeing the details I'm opening it a bit so you can see it better so there it is so let us go down and see if I can expand the summary option so let's go so that's this click on this one so sometime because of the size it actually minimizes the information so you can hardly see it so you just have to go through and make sure that you look for any weird or out of place line and then you expand it so let's just click on shift and move all of these over to go immediately under registration number and the summary option would be here as well so let's just expand this expand this so all of this is going to be expanded all right so that one is a little bit out of place so let me just bring it back in a little bit good and then the grand total let me expand it as well so let us just close and view the table ah so let us look at it let me go across there you go so the registration fee is now showing and if you look you will see the information so you have the average of for that person and then you have the summary of it again so as you go through you will see that the figures are there and the information is also there so let us view it here you go so this would be your table so you can actually go through all right so that's basically it for today so we have gone through database save 
We have gone through database, create our tables, create our form, created our queries, as well as our report, having two heading in the report, as well as the arrange the report so that it looks appropriate. So that's the end of our session today. Until next time.